In this tutorial, we are going to discuss how to change the data that is programmed into your text string, as well as discuss the font selection and a few other items. So we're going to come back up here to the top and click to create a text string again. And I'm just going to zoom in just a little bit. <clears throat> now by default view, we do see that we have our string view. Now the string view does contain data as well as string style and string displacement, which are the three elements we'll be discussing today. As well as I want to come over to the general and briefly discuss this enable feature. The enable disable, which would be no check, allows you to turn an item off. So whether it's a text string or a 2D code or a graphic, we can disable the object simply by unchecking this box. What that does is it allows the object to still remain in our project file, but when we go to run the laser project file, the mini lays will actually ignore it and will not mark it. This is very useful. You can type in notes to yourself for fixture instructions or special part handling procedures, and you can leave that text inside the project file and read it whenever you open the file, but you can avoid having it marked on the part. So just a useful tip. Or if you have programs that contain some data that you want to mark at one point, but another day maybe you don't want to mark all that data, you can pick and choose within an individual project file what you want to be laser marked and what you do not want to be laser marked. Okay, so we're going to come back and enable the object for now. Come back over to our string, which is our default view. And first thing is, how do we change this data? By default, it says string. It's very simple. We'll come to data and go over to text. Simply click in here and select our text. And we can type in whatever we want. Okay, I'm going to type in Tykma for example purposes. I'm going to make my text just a little bit bigger here. Talked about the ID previously. The ID is just the name for this text item. It doesn't necessarily mean anything in particular. It just tells you know, us that this is the 14th text string that we've created today since having this software open. Um, and that is an automatic nomenclature. If you wanted to name it whatever you want, you know, ABC123, you can do that. It has no outcome uh, on how the text is marked or what is marked on your part. It is also used as a designator for a text string. So if we need to pull data from an external source and put it into a text string, such as data that's in a spreadsheet or on a database of some sort, or data that comes over an Ethernet connection or RS-232, we can take that data and this allows us to say, where is that data going to go? It's going to go in ID whatever, whatever we choose to name that ID, ID1, ID2. We may name them A, B, C, D, E. So whatever we choose to name, we have the designator for where that goes. Other than that, on an average uh, everyday marking application, you're going to ignore this ID. Now we're going to talk about fonts and how to select different fonts. You do not use or you do not have to use all of the fonts that are available in your system. The MiniLays Pro software package uses any Windows TrueType font available. So any font that Windows would use in any application like Word or anything else, Excel, that is already on your system, you can import into the software. Now we do cover importing of fonts in a separate tutorial. So if you want to look and, and uh, see how fonts are brought in, there is a video tutorial for that. It's also covered in the first tutorial, which is the basic overview. Okay, we're not going to get into any detail on the fonts right now. So on my system, I have quite a few fonts brought in, and I'm just going to switch from Arial down to this Times New Roman font, just to show you how simple it is to change your fonts. And you can see for each font, we have the available styles. So for this, we have a regular by default. We also have a bold available, a bold italic, and an italic font. So all those styles are at our disposal. You can quickly change. Now we work our way down through the list here. We do have height. Now this height right now is not a valid height. And the reason is this height feature is only utilized when you're using what's called circle displacement. And circle displacement wraps your text to a circle. Now this is covered in a separate tutorial. We're not going to cover that in this tutorial because it's a little bit more detailed. So we'll get into that. But for now, you're going to ignore this height. When you want to set the height of your object, you're going to come to General, and you're going to use this values here, which are your true values. Right now, this text is 7.51 millimeters tall by 40.19 millimeters wide. 
Okay, so you can see that doesn't correlate to this text height here. Okay, that only becomes active once you need to change the circle displacement size of your text. All right, so if we come back up to the top, we'll go to shear or angle. Now, these are very similar to what you saw under the general view. However, shear and angle are now going to apply to each individual character as opposed to the entire text string. For example, if I change the angle of these characters to 90 degrees, you can see that each character rotates to 90. If I were to grab this object and flip it upright like this, you can see that now I can do a, a pretty neat effect here and create a vertical text column. If I were to change this back to zero, now you can see my text is just at a 90 degree angle and I can flip this back this way and I'm back to the default. So angle individual character versus angle the entire text string here. Now talk about these two items here, space and compression. Now pocketing distribution and embolden strength as well as global outline are some advanced functionality for making characters bold and filling operations which is here. We're not going to discuss that right now. Those are advanced operations that 99% of people are not going to use. Those are covered in your software manual. So if you want to get into the, the nuts and bolts of what these uh, can do for you, I would recommend referencing your software manual. But we'll talk about spacing compression because these are very commonly used. Spacing is simply the spacing between each character. So at 100%, you are at the default value. Um, so for Times New Roman, this is the normal spacing here. And if I were to increase this from 100 to 120, you can see that I get a little bit more spacing in between my characters. Now, I like to add a little bit of spacing. Um, and adding a little spacing when you're laser marking something always makes it a little easier to read, in particular if you're laser marking small characters. So always coming above 100 if you have the space gives you a real nice clean look to your mark. Very, very easy to read. You avoid the letters becoming jumbled or almost looking like they're overlapping, in particular when you create, again, very small marked characters. Now compression allows you to squeeze those characters. So if I come below 100, which is the default, to 90, you can see that my text string is now not as wide. And what that did is it squeezed the width of each character while still maintaining the same aspect of spacing. Now the spacing is not the same, but the aspect is the same. If I come up here and increase my spacing, I can get some space in between my characters and then compress them in. So if I have some, some width restrictions, I can still fit my text while still increasing a little bit of space and then compress my character to stay within the width restraints that I have on a particular part. And we'll take these back to default values. So that is the basic overview on how to set your fonts, set your data, as well as control your spacing, your compression, and your enable-disable feature.